Yeah, okay, we came back through the forest. Previously I was recording something over in the, uh, over in a little power line easement they got nearby, but now I'm over here near a, uh, near a wetland. We've got some sort of beaver dam situation. And, uh, you know, there's some interesting stuff going on here. You got a button bush down there, Cephalanthus occidentalis. You get some sort of uh, some sort of urticaceous plant that looks like it might sting me if I get a little too close to it. Not sure what that is. Could could also be a woodsia or a pilia, which is in that family, but they don't they don't sting to my knowledge. Actually, woodsia woodsia can sting, or woodwardia, whatever the hell. No, woodwardia is a fern. In any case, that doesn't matter. You had a a chelone glabra back there, which uh, I've come to love. You know, this year. I'll be happy to show you that. And uh, there's a couple other things over here. You got some uh, Joe Pie weeds, some Eutrochium finishing up down here. This will probably be a shorter, sloppier video than what I just would have put out. But who knows? We'll, we'll see what we can see. We'll go around here. I'll give you a close up of that Chalone Glabra. But I see something that kind of looks uh, either orchidy or it's just the seed pods of Clethra. But I got to get over there and I'll, uh, I'll update you and I'll let you know what I find. Yeah, okay, I'm not too sure what this guy is. Those are the fruits, or at least they're ripening into fruits. The leaves on it are not... That's not this. This is, looks like some sort of dogwood. The leaves on it are linear, also opposite. But they have a little bit of dentation to them. So I'm not too sure. I'll have to figure that one out. I'll figure this out too. This is definitely some kind of urticaceous bastard. Although it's uh I gotta stop I gotta stop using that material. That's it's an urticaceous plant of some sort. And then you got what appears to be one of the native hypericums, one of the pink flowered hypericums, although it's all closed up. Maybe a hypericum uh Virginiana, the Virginia Marsh Hypericum, or that's that doesn't go by Hypericum Virginiana, it has a different name, but you get the idea. That's what it is. Uh so some mystery stuff. Sorry I can't give you more info, but I'll take pictures and I'll try to key this stuff out as best I can. Especially this urtica this uh, urticaceae here. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's definitely a hypericum though. That's one of the weird native uh, one of the weird native hypericums over there. This guy right here, in case you couldn't tell what I was looking at. But uh, yeah, I'll take some pictures. I'll get back to you. I'm really curious to know what this thing is right here. Might be invasive, might not be. Might be something I've seen before, and I'm just not recognizing it at this uh, you know, stage in the game. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> so I answered my question. I came over here to show you Chelone glabra, and then I looked down at those fruits, those ones that are wrapped up. That's what we were looking at. Those were just wrapped up Chelone gla Chelone glabras. Look at the oh, there's a cool. Uh, it's just a that's a spent flower on there. I thought that was a cool caterpillar. The leaves are the same. The fruits are the same. That's why you got to op open your goddamn eyes. You know. Pay attention to what you're looking at, and you'll uh, you know answer a lot of your own questions that way. And uh, yeah, lesson learned. Uh, one of the uh, it's a it's a plantain, it's a plantaginaceae. So you ever get those little things growing up in your lawn? I'll put a plantago lanceolata, or the English plantain. I'll put a picture of that up. Same family as that guy. Let me out. This is the order, which I mean bilaterally symmetrical flowers and opposite leaves kind of really narrow it down for you. You know. Let's go see what else we got going on over here. I'll have to figure out what that urticaceae was though. Yeah, see this boggy swampy stuff always gets me excited. It's the wrong time of year to hunt for a lot of the orchids that inhabit this type of habitat. But you want to know what? A lot of these orchids are pretty persistent. You can at least go off at the fruits, you know. If I find a pitcher plant in here, or a drosera, I'll be super jazzed. But uh, so far, you know, nothing of that sort. But you know. These, uh, these boggy pond shores, these are good spots to come, you know, just in general, good spots to come. You can see the beaver's been hard at work. Indeed, this entire, uh, this entire pond seems to be, you know, the result of a, of a nice beaver pond. They've been gnawing on everything, at least right here, specifically. And you know me, I'm pretty terrified of beavers, so let's keep moving. Yeah, you can just barely make out what it is. That came up a little ways, but you got a tiny little good year. Barely even with venation on the leaves there. Tiny little guy, can't even tell you if it's, t oh, probably tessellata. Tessellata or uh, pubescence, but only the one of them. He's small and he's just wrapping up, so I wonder if they're disestablishing here. You know, 
you expect to see good year in the forest type like this, you know. Lots of hemlock above us, some pretty big, some pretty big hemlocks, two white pines. No red spruce though, at least none that I've seen. Sometimes you get red spruce down here too, but you know, uh, nothing terribly, terribly of interest to me. Where'd he go? There he is. Nothing terribly, terribly of interest to me around the bog so far. You got uh, that swamp aster, but eh, I might uh, turn around and cut it off pretty soon. So we'll see what happens. I'll go a little bit further first. Some type of good year right here though. Okay, I've just been trucking my way around this little pond. I came down here into a peaty little corner. I'll probably see what's going on. You know, I'm almost down near the end of the thing. I'll see if I can find the stream that feeds into this. We'll see if there's anything going off interesting over there. And then we'll probably head out and get some lunch before I go to a, another location or something like that. Anyway, this might be the last thing I see. Got a cool species of Bidens here that I actually almost thought, just based off of those uh, those bracts there, and uh, the fact that it has opposite leaves, was a Helianthus, was a sunflower, which we do have, you know, some native you know, sunflowers here in New England, not Helianthus annua, the sunflower, but you know, you get some other ones that are native. It's, it's more than one species in the genus. But anyway, that is not this. This is in fact a species of Bidens. Coming up next to another uh, <laughs> another species of Bidens there. This is Bidens cernua though. This is one of the showier ones, I guess. And I'll flip this guy around. And I mean, you could see why I could think this is a Helianthus, just in combination with these nice opposite leaves here. Opposite clasping leaves. Oops, toothed margin. Sorry, I thought something was on me. Coarsely toothed margin. Flip that guy over. Yeah, nothing much going on. Sometimes the stems are hairy. Sometimes they're not. This one's got a couple of hairs on it. And, you know, I should have known. I'm actually going to look and see how closely Bidens is related to Helianthus. Because both Bidens and Helianthus tend to have... You know, some pretty elaborate phyleries, some pretty elaborate involucral, involucral, because remember, involucral, this is an involucral. I'm not even zoomed in here. There we go. Got to remember, every sunflower head is an involucral. It's a cup holding many flowers. And in fact, I'm just looking at this guy. This guy's done. Most of these are done. Here, this one's still got some good, this one's still got some good uh, disc florets going off in there. You know. That's nice. The rays have a, uh, you know, three little, three little danglies there, three little notches, and I mean, this guy just likes it right in the edges of marshes, I guess. Never seen this species of Bidens, but uh, not rare from what I just read in my little, my little handy dandy, uh, my little handy dandy pocket flora that I keep on me. But anyway, uh, you know, but Bidens, a lot of them are accused of being weeds, but I mean, this would be nice to plant out, you know. I'm going to see how closely related Bidens and Helianthus, the two genera, are. Because I just get a hunch they're actually, they might be pretty closely related. Helianthus, Helianthopsis, Bidens, Helianth, uh, Helianth, Helianthopsis, is that, is that what that is? Hang on, what's the, what's the false sunflower genus there? Yeah, he, oh no, it's just Heliopsis. Heliopsis helianthodes. That's that's going to be in the video. Not native to here, but native to other parts of the U.S. But anyway, I digress. Uh, there used to be a whole, you know, cluster. The Helianthiae Alliance, which was a whole tribe of, uh, you know, yeah, sunflower-adjacent members of Asteraceae. Because I guess back in the day, they really just had them separated into two different subfamilies. Uh, and then I guess as they you know peeled back the layers of the onion, they realized that a lot of these asters that do look similar were not that closely related. Um, so superficially, some of these species of biodens can apparently look like some of these species of sunflower. And I mean, I call them all, I call all of them sunflowers, the whole family Asteraceae, but you know, um, Helianthus, that genus sunflowers. So we'll see. Really nice habitat here. Not not really that peaty in the grand scheme of things. Of course, it could be different over here. Pretty open over there. Um, so we'll just see. I'm seeing some indicator plants of some stuff I like. I saw some irises that were going to seed. A ton of peat moss here, but no uh, no um, sort of 
orchids, you know, leftovers. They wouldn't be in bloom, but, you know, you, you could expect to see something like a, like a Pagonia ophioglossoides would, uh, would hang out in something like this. And, of course, I'm always looking for, you know, pitcher plants and uh, drosera, but uh, I have not seen many other bog indicating species besides, you know, you get some arrowheads, you get some sparganium sprinkled about in here. So it might just be, it might just be that this is still pretty, you know, this isn't at that stage where it's completely, you know, anoxic and nutrient deficient that you're bringing those in. But, uh, whatever. I digress. Um, yeah. Biden Cernua. Not, not bad, you know, not bad for a beggar tix. Beggar tix is the common name for a lot of these species, but, uh, Pretty easy to see how one could maybe get that confused with a, you know, a Helianthus. Anyway, that's enough of that. Yeah, so I hiked myself over to where this thing starts. No, uh, no orchids and fruit, no pitcher plants, nothing like that. Tons of, uh, Sparganium, though. Typhacea, that's the closest relative. Uh, in fact, the only relative you get to the genus Typha, to the cattails. That's always, you know, pretty interesting. Underrated genus. Uh, and I've seen that, you know, growing with some of the plants I was hoping to find over here. But that's okay. We get to see Bidens. We got to see a cool, uh, uh, that Chelone. Figure out what that looks like in fruit. And, of course, you get this urticaceous. This guy's not doing so hot, but you get this urticaceous plant hanging around that I've never seen before. I would say it looks like a Woodwardia. What the? No, Woodsia. Woodsia, I think is what it is. No, Laportia. Laportia is what I'm thinking of. It looks like a Laportia, but I think Laportia has got alternate leaves or world leaves, something like that. This one's got opposite, but I also don't think it's, you know, Urtica dioica, the regular stinging nettle. But, uh, you know, I'll get back to you on that. In any case, this is where this little sort of woodland stream got dammed up and feeds out into this, uh, into this wetland here. Real interesting. Uh... Not, not the type that you're going to find, you know, carnivorous plants in, though, apparently. So, we'll get out of here. I think I'm going to grab a bite to eat, and I think I'm going to try my luck at another spot. We might, I might, I might make a long haul out to the Cape. I mean, there's no real traffic today, so we'll see what happens. In any case, take it easy. That's all I got for this one. So, I'm on my way out. I come across this nice, nice bed of fungus here. These are, uh, I forget the Clavinopsis, Claveria, I forget the genus name, but they're doing quite well in this little depression just adjacent to just more of that sort of woodland boggy stuff. I'm not, I'm not going in there. I can't bring myself to do it right this second, but you got that. Claveria, Clavinopsis, I can never remember with the fungi, man. You got to cut me a break. I'm still, I'm still getting caught up to speed with the plants, you know? And then you got Geoglossum. This one I do remember. The earth Tongues. And believe it or not, both these are just basidiomycetes. These are just your typical, I could be wrong. I know geoglossum definitely is. These are just your typical stock and cat mushrooms, but they never open up uh, like their gills, like a toadstool or like something you'd normally be used to seeing. And I believe that geoglossum and uh, that yellow guy are both just sapotrophs, just breaking down decaying material in the duff. But uh, pretty cool. This entire... Uh, stand of trees here is all hemlock and i mean it's a lot of this part of the state are these nice you know stands of hemlock which is a you know a threatened species but uh, these guys are doing well and i like it when you get a hemlock forest because as you can see there's no trail here this is just easy to easy as hell to walk through versus what we just came through on the edge of this lake which is all brush and i'm getting you know all cut up and whatever hopefully not getting poison ivy i saw some where i was earlier today but uh, none over here. And of course all these ferns would be uh, Osmondastrum cinnamonium. These would all be cinnamon ferns. Pretty common in this type of habitat. But uh, yeah, love seeing Tsuga canadensis. Easy as hell to bushwhack under, or even bushwhack through the smaller ones. Not a, it's not a terribly unfriendly conifer compared to some of them. And then of course in here you get, a, you get some yellow birch and some white pine mixed in. No, um, no, uh, no red spruce though. A little further north of here, you get the red spruce, but uh, you know, you can tell the difference. The the hemlock has that nice plated bark, but a spruce would have more, um, you know, pustulate bark. Little little pustules. It looks a little bit different. A little flakier, but whatever. Uh, 
I think that's going to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed that little fungus tangent. I, I thought I just broke my, um, my little GPS camera cable like I did earlier in the season on accident. But in fact, I was able to push it back into position. Guess what, though? I bought two because I'm not a chump. Something breaks, and you know it's bound to break easily. Just get two of them. It's my wisdom for the end of this video. We're going to uh, go see if we can find our way back to the road because I'm not exactly sure where I am right now. But uh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine.